welcome back to my channel. So, already gonna go ahead and just get this off my chest. Tried to film this video, got it filmed. The vid the actual stuff looked really good. For some reason, it's not wanting to load onto my computer so I can edit it. My freaking editing system, we spent a pretty penny on it. It's not working the way it's supposed to. It's really starting to, oh, my. If I could strangle a computer, I guess technically you could, even though it really wouldn't do anything, like the stand on the monitor part. Guess that's how that would work. Anywho, we're not gonna get into the logistics of it. Now that I've got that out of the way, that's not what this video is about. This video, basically I kind of had an idea where I was pretty much sitting on my phone looking through new makeup launches, kind of going through different, you know, brands, stuff like that. And then I was sitting there and I was really thinking about why is there specific brands that it's not that I don't not like them or like what they stand for, but like, why is it so hard for me to step out my comfort zone? And so I sat with that question and I really thought about it and I came up with five different makeup brands that I kind of am apprehensive to buy from. Okay, first things first, we'll probably get the most, I don't want to say controversial one out of the way, um, but this is one that multiple people use and are like absolutely diehard fans about, and that is Huda Beauty. Now, I have multiple different reasons for each company why I think maybe I haven't been able to take that final step and buy those products. Because I will say I've had multiple times where I've put a Huda Beauty product in my online cart and then I just like chickened out and I was like, mm, no, you know what? I don't need that right now. I think the reason why, because it's not that they're not beautiful products, they're absolutely gorgeous products. They catch my eye consistently. But for me, sometimes I get to a point where it's like I almost go to the opposite end of things. And what I mean by that is that, I mean, when you get on Instagram, I mean, Huda is like Instagram, like goddess. Like she, that's where she does the majority of her marketing. And that's what the majority of people use, at least like one Huda product and like, makeup tutorials and videos and stuff like that. And so sometimes I feel like when I get something thrown in my face so constantly, it's almost like, are they using it be to use it because they absolutely love the product or are they using it because so many other beauty influencers are using it? So they think that because they follow that trend, it'll get more views, which is a very, very cynical way to sit there and think about that. But sometimes that's what happens with overhyped stuff is that they're overhyped. They don't necessarily work well for everybody. It's just like, you just kind of jump on the bandwagon a little bit. And so sometimes when that happens, I almost do the opposite where I'm like, mm, I definitely can't get that now. Definitely cannot get that now, you know, which is really kind of messed up in a way, but I think with that, and then of course, there's been past controversies with Huda, you know, I know the biggest one for her is, you know, when it, she came out with her powders, you know, she named them after a lot of like baking stuff, like pound cake, stuff like that, um, which took away like an idea from like Beauty Bakery, which is what their whole brand is based on. And it seemed, I feel like there's quite a few things that are like a little nitpicked and it's like well they stole that idea well they stole that idea I'm like mm, I mean I've seen it done before you can't really say that that idea was stolen because it's been done before but that specifically kind of struck a little bit of a chord with a lot of people including myself so that kind of like made me put a little bit of a break on it as well but again, like the more that I'm on Instagram, cause I'm kind of on that platform a little bit more now than other social media. And the more that I kind of see her, I mean, she's freaking gorgeous. She's this beautiful, like, you know, company, like CEO woman who like takes charge. And a lot of what she stands for, I can get behind. 
So that is one that I've been really interested in, but never been able to take the full step. So that's the first one. The next makeup brand that I have a hard time kind of just going for it and buying that product, I would say is Hourglass. And the big reason why I think for me for Hourglass is first off how expensive it is. They're, they're I mean, they're a pretty penny. I mean, they're kind of even more up there in Sephora than a lot of the other brands. With that also being said, I have had, I've tried one of their products before, just one, and it was one of the ambient light powders and it's one of the mini ones. And I think I got it in a box or something like that. I don't remember like specifically buying it, but anywho, I used it and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. But here's the thing, that powder is a finishing powder. It's not a setting powder. Your girl here, kind of combination now, but usually very, very oily, especially in the summer. So it puts this beautiful sheen on my face, but it only lasts for a couple of hours, which is a big, it's kind of a big deal if I'm paying like 50, $60, I think is what that, like a full size pan powder is, or it's like 40 something. And then like the palettes are like 60, 70 something. I don't know. But with that being said, I just, it's kind of one of those things where I'm just like, I can't ever like fully because of the price and because it seems like a lot of the products don't necessarily work with my skin type that would actually make things stay, stay in place. I mean, a blush, I've heard the blush formula is really, really great. Blush you don't go through very quickly. So that might be something that you're more willing to invest in. I just cannot take that step to get in there. So there's that company brand that I have a hard time like really just diving in and really exploring their products. The next one, I also feel like maybe a little controversial, um, is Natasha Denona. Her eyeshadows look absolutely gorgeous. The biggest reason why I had never bought anything from her is because of how expensive it is. And it's really hard for me. And I spend a lot of money on makeup. Don't get me wrong. I, I can drop a pretty penny on makeup. But for me, like, I love the Anastasia formula. Um, I just recently start, uh, tried out the Jeffree Star, but the like formula works so beautifully. So for something like that, to have multiple different shades, but also perform as well, I kind of have a hard time dropping, you know, $130 for it. But I was super excited when they came out with the mini palettes because I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try out the mini palettes and if I love that formula, then I'm, I'm, I'm sold. Before I could even purchase the mini palettes, there were so many back and forths. And so many people have said that the mini palette formula for those eyeshadows is nothing, nowhere near what the big palettes are, which is very disappointing as a consumer who's really interested and in trying something from a brand, because it's really nice to be able to get something that is in our price range that we can try before we make a full investment. But if you're not gonna put all of the, you know, love and care behind those products for us to really try out your formula and it's not even going to be the same formula then that kind of just like turns I feel like it turns off a lot of other customers and it's not just me so that is one thing that like brand that I would honestly truly love to try something out and maybe if I finally like see something like a palette that is just like absolutely like blows me away. I will go ahead and drop the money for one of the bigger palettes, but it's just like what I said, it's a little disappointing from some of the reviews that you hear um, about the mini palettes. So that's one that I've never really been able to fully like just dive in on. Next one I am going to say is Milk um, Makeup. Now, this one, it doesn't, isn't expensive. It's actually a pretty mid-range, um, which I enjoy. 
when they first started coming out with stuff, they came out with a lot of like the blur sticks, which was really interesting, but I don't like that type of packaging, I guess you would call it. That specific packaging just didn't draw me in, but I was like, okay, you know, I'll wait and I'll see. Well, and then of course they come out with, you know, their like cannabis line, their marijuana line, which I feel like there was quite a few different companies like indie brands and stuff like that. I know Melt originally came out with it, um, something like that. And it just seemed really gimmicky, if that makes any sense. To me, it just was more of a like, I don't even know if these products are really great. And some of the products I didn't hear super great things about. To me, it was just really gimmicky. So that kind of like turned me off. I was like, mm, I don't know. And then of course they came out with the Hydro Primer, the Grip Primer, which sounds a uh, freaking amazing and I legitimately that'll probably be the very first thing that I buy from them because everything that I'm hearing is it's like just tacky enough for all of that foundation and all of your makeup to just kind of stick and stay which if you can't already tell I have a problem with that because of my skin I kind of rejects makeup after so long out of all of these brands that I'm talking about, probably Huda Beauty and Milk will be the first big two companies that I st I really try to branch, branch out, broaden my horizons. All right, the very last makeup brand that I've not really been able to like fully just kind of dive in is Cover FX. I do think that because today in this day and age, with makeup being very oversaturated, multiple people come out and multiple companies come out with very similar, if not the same products. And it's not saying that that's a bad thing because the great thing about this is that, okay, so because this is happening, you not only get to choose who, what makeup you get, you get more of a variety, but you also get to choose who you support. Right, but also what goes into that is like how much does it cost? You know, packaging I feel like is becoming a huge thing. Cover effects packaging, I don't know what it is. It's not, it's very sleek. Um, it's very, but for me, it's very plain. It never catches my eye. Um, it doesn't, it just doesn't do anything super like, come, come check me out, come try me. Um, which, it's kind of sad because overall I hear they're very, very consistent, I feel like, with their products and their formula. But I just never been able to like really fully like commit. They are more expensive as well. Like when it comes to like Ulta, because they're in I think they're both in Ulta and Sephora. Um, but when like it comes to like Ulta specifically, they're definitely more on the higher end of Ulta for sure. So it's kind of hard, again, to sit there and be like, well, you know, I've got all these other products that are very similar, they work the same, and they are less. So it's very hard for me to really just kind of like dive in to what cover effects is all about. I also think probably one of the other things is they don't come out with stuff very often, which is refreshing but also sometimes they get kind of get lost. Sometimes you get some, you know, companies that do a really, really good job about not releasing a lot of products, but they do such a good job advertising and like making something seem like it's super duper special, like absolutely amazing, like you need it. And I just don't feel like Cover FX has quite gotten that. With that being said, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed my video. Um, go ahead and hit a like um, if you enjoyed it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell if you would like to see more videos from me. Um, I would like to hear more um, from you guys about these brands and if whether or not you guys think that I should buy from them, whether or not I shouldn't, or if there's specific products that you think I should try. Um, I would really, really like to know. So make sure you leave those back down in the comments. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. Mm -hmm.